Well, welcome everybody back to the Legacy Series. We are here with Pastor Peter, and we are talking about his message, The Second Mile. Now, this is a message that you preached quite a few years ago, I think. We well, actually had it as a theme for a year, didn't we? We did. Um, yep. Gosh, like over 10 years ago. It must have been a long time ago, right? <laughs> long time ago. We all walked around the block, went the extra mile. That's yeah. right. That's right. I think I was, I was, I might have been freshly saved, actually, when we, when we did that. Um, anyway, so first question to start us off, do you still get mistaken for Russell Crowe? No, I don't, unfortunately. It was a one-off deal. <laughs> so if you You'd watch, have to watch the program for that You have to watch the message for that one, Pastor Peter, telling a story about being at the captain's table and people mistaking him for Russell Crowe. Um, so basically, uh, what, what, okay, we'll start us off then. Um, how do we create a lifestyle of, of living in the second mile? You know, it's hard to go the second mile. It's, just, it's much easier just to do the bare minimum in life. Well, of course, you know, there's a cost to everything, right? And there's a cost to failure even when you think about it or cost to laziness. You know, for, and, you know, you kind of think, as you said, well, it's easy not to, right? Mm. So, you know, if a person's lazy in life, the cost that you pay, well, it could be poverty, it could be overweight, it could be mm. a lot of factors, you know, it could, uh, you know, just not be a productive life in many areas. I mean, if you're lazy in your marriage, you'll possibly end up in divorce. Mm. And so, you know, they, they obviously... Uh, you could say there's a price to the second mile, but in actual fact, you enjoy the benefits of the second true, mile. So it's true. not so much paying the price, you enjoy the benefits of it. Yeah. And there's a great blessing because Jesus yeah. said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And that's what the second mile is about, giving of yourself, giving of your yeah. time, giving of your energy, just doing that extra bit. And yeah. that's where, you know, the extraordinary life kicks in. Yeah. And I mean, you mentioned you have your five points that the second mile is uncongested, it's unexpected, it's unasked, it's uncomplicated. And it's unreasonable. Right. And um, <laughs> it, it is uncongested, you know. Uh, you've, it's amazing how not many people go the second mile. No, because as, as you say, people think, oh, it's too hard. Uh, but they don't realize the blessing that comes out yeah, of that, the benefits yeah. that come out of that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people go, I think, a lot of people go the second mile in some area of their life. True. I mean, you could talk about going to the gym, for example. Some people go the extra mile at the gym. You see them down there working out, mm, you know, yeah. and maybe they've got those abs as a benefit, you know, but mm. that's one area. But then they don't, you know, don't necessarily do. Uh, I think, you know, we, we, we need to live a second mile life as a part of our life, be mm. it in our marriage, be mm. it with our kids, be it in our church life, be it in our work life, mm. you know. And so every area, just be a second mile person rather than just focus on one area. Yeah, true. And so a lot of people may excel in one area, but, you know, you can be a successful businessman but have your marriage falling apart. Yeah, so what's yeah, the point yeah, of that? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and, and vice versa, you know. So you, so it's, it's living a lifestyle of the second mile, and that's yeah. when you really enjoy the blessing. Yeah, because there'll definitely be areas in your life where it's actually perhaps easier to go the second mile, like if you've just got yeah. a new job or something like that, you know, and you want to impress the boss, you've got the drive to do it. And sure. But like you just said, you might your marriage might be falling apart. So right. you might be, you know, not putting the second mile in that. So it's, yeah. I guess it's put to, yeah, every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. um, excellence is a key value here at City Impact Church, right. which is basically the second mile, isn't it, is, is having that spirit of excellence. So, um, and, and that is doing the best with what you've got, you yeah. know. Um, you know, that's what excellence is. A lot of people think it's being showy or, you know, and it's not. It's just a matter of do it, putting your best foot forward, doing the best, because excellent, excellence does honour God and inspires people. And it doesn't have to be, you know, necessarily, I won't say world class. I mean, we should be better than the world in that sense. But, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to have all the, the, the bells and the whistles. But mm. it's that spirit of excellence. That's mm. what Daniel had. Mm. The Bible talks about it. So it's a biblical thing as well. Daniel, the Bible says Daniel had an excellent spirit, mm. a spirit of excellence. Is that a value that you... Um, wanted to have with th this church from the very beginning? Is that I think we grew into it more. Mm. Um, I, there's no two ways about it. I mean, I've always been a kind of person... Uh, when I got, once I got saved, um, before then I wasn't mm. a, certainly a second miler. Mm. Only in some wrong areas I was a second miler mm. going the extra mm. distance. Mm. Um, but you know, when I got saved, I, I did want to be all out for God, which is basically what the second mile is. Yeah, you know, true. just just living true. a full on life. And so out of that comes excellence. And um, so no, I don't think no, we didn't start out um, that we, we wanted to do things well. Mm. 
And so I guess, mm. you know, but I, I wouldn't have termed it back then. No, yeah, true. And I suppose that's, when it comes to excellence, there's a, almost a fine line, you know, where some people, um, obviously excellence honors God, which is amazing. Um, mm. And that's a, 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 a reason why we, did, why we are excellent, you know. Um, but some people can view that as, as works, I suppose, if we're not careful. Sure. If you yep. get so tied up in excellence, then it turns into works. How yep. do you balance that? How do you gauge that? Well, again, I think, you know, you've got to be grounded. Um, uh, it is true that if you just have excellence as one of your, you know, the the only uh, character, um, you can become legalistic. Mm. So everything is, you know, rules and regulations and you can't have a bit of, um, uh, you know, thing on the floor, you know, you get tape on the floor, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's going to be just done so well. And, and and so you fall into legalism and that's not, that's the wrong spirit. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got to do things well, but do things also with, with, in the spirit of freedom, you know, yeah. where, where the spirit is, is liberty. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a mess in the store when the cattle's there and all that. Yeah. You've got to understand the, the balance of it all. And I suppose it comes back to heart motive, doesn't it? Like, for example, you know, excellence that honors God is more of a response from us, isn't it? Where right. we've experienced God and we have the heart to just want to give him our best, opposed to legalism, which is excellence that wants to uh, obtain approval from God, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's a great way of putting it. I mean, God does things excellently, right? Look at the mountains and mm, the rivers yeah, and the oceans. Absolutely. I mean, you know, he, yeah. does, he does things very well. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. right. Um, you know, we all live busy lives today. And so um, I guess how do we gain the heart of going the second mile um, and, and what's, you know, having the balance of being able to go the second mile without burning out, you know, in our lives? Yeah. I guess that comes back to what we're just saying, isn't it? Having the heart, right? Sure. But. And, I, and I think you've got to find your rest in God. You know, the Bible talks about finding your rest in God, and mm. you've got to have those breathing spaces, which is not so much easy today. Mm. Uh, I mean, you know, we just recently had a 50s night in the church, mm. and, uh, you know, back in the 50s, I was thinking about it, being a 50s kid. And, and of course, you know, the television wasn't around mm. in the early mm. 50s, and, and uh, then came black and white, by the way, <laughs> before we got color. Everybody thinks it just kind of happened as it is. <laughs> You know, but uh, and it used to the the television used to be snowy, and you know you yeah. try to get all the snowy out of the. But in any case, I digress. And um, so you know, life was a lot easier going. The trap yeah. there's no traffic and and that, so you could breathe a lot easier. Mm. Uh, and they were great days. I'm not sure whether God intended us that we live these hectic, mm. fast paced lives that we find ourselves in the world today mm. with the the internet and and mm. uh, you know cell phones ringing all the time and the demands on people sitting in traffic and so forth, so forth. This is a world that we've created, mm. uh, the human human race has created, and so we find ourselves here, whether you like it or not. But you've, you've got to make those times and breathe those times. Those yeah. walks on the beach are so important. Mm. You know, they, they say, as always said, the best things in lives are free, right? Mm. And so often we think, you know, we've got to be wealthy to be able to enjoy life, and it's mm. not true. And, and uh, you know, walk on the beach or walk in the forest or, you know, some time just to rest, make sure you get sleep, you know, Sleep's important for a healthy, mm. healthy life as mm. well, and uh, you got to find time to breathe. Mm. Mm. And it's true, like what you're just saying, that God probably never designed us really to be living such busy lives. But in a way, it's like He almost foresaw it. You know, when He's with the Ten Commandments, one of them is Thou shalt keep the Sabbath, right? Exactly. And it's yeah. probably one of the commandments that so many people break, yeah. just not resting. Well, of course, yeah, and because uh, we don't want to be legalistic about it, the Sabbath no. was a sad day, mm. and that's why, of course, you have you know churches like the Sim Day Adventists around today. Mm. But there is there is obviously um, a great biblical value because the, the Bible says, you know, if you keep the Sabbath, uh, you'll live a long life. You know, mm. and so it's healthy, mm. um, you know, um, having a rest, and so it's important, um, you know, to find a Sabbath rest and to take a day, mm. you know, where you're, you're not on that treadmill, you know, mm. turn your cell phone mm. off for. Day and yeah. you know, but that's harder, easier said than done, right? <laughs> but the thing is, is that um, uh, you know, obviously in the Israel nation and the, the the Jews, they did not, they didn't even cook, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, and yeah, or right. make the bed, no. you know, or anything like yeah, that. And yeah. I don't think we, we we necessarily have to live, well, we don't have to live like that. Yeah. But it is important to you know take that that day to you know have some you know relaxation, if I mm. use that term. Mm, absolutely. Um, you mentioned a great quote in this message. Uh, Grace is the energy of the second mile. What do you mean by this? 
Well, the grace of God. Yeah, I mean, there's so many factors in it. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength, and mm. and the grace of God. You know, grace is uh, unmerited favor, but it's also the empowerment of God, mm. the empowerment to live and mm. overcoming life. And you know, God's grace is upon us, and uh, His grace is poured mm. out. And mm. so, you know, when you live under the grace of God, not under the legalism, because if you're always trying to, you know, as you say, perform, mm. live up to expectations, you know, thinking you got to earn credits thinking you've got to earn God's favor you know you're living out of the wrong spirit and mm. and and it's a um, you know you'll never ever be at peace with yourself yeah and so to be at peace with yourself you've got to understand the grace of God that he he loves and accepts you and and you'll never perform well enough uh, under the legalistic system yeah you know, there's yeah. none good no not one right? exactly you know? and I, I guess that's going back to what we we're talking about with excellence that it's when you understand the grace that you've received from God that you're empowered to be able to go the second mile and bring excellence because the the work is done in a way, you know. Right. You, you don't have to earn anything. It's, yep. it's purely out of pure heart motive, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, and then two points that you had as well um, in this message was that we are to be faithful mm-hmm. and maintain our passion. Right. Um, and so what are some practical tips on maintaining our passion for God and for people? Yeah. Uh, and, and those two points are important. I always say, you know, if you want to sort of have a marriage that, that makes it through, you know, maintain your marriage and be faithful, you know, mm-hmm. it's the same, mm-hmm. and same at work. And, and if you want to, you know, have a, a good life at work and get a pay rise, you know, <laughs> then mm-hmm. exactly. be, be faithful. It's the same as anything, right? Mm-hmm. So um, maintain your passion. It's amazing. I mean, sport's a great illustration, isn't it? When a, a team loses its passion to play mm-hmm. uh, and their heads go down and, you know, they, they just lose that edge, if you like. Mm-hmm. But when a person's passionate, and again, another great illustration, is a is um, a young couple falling in love. You know, mm. um, you know they'll climb the highest mountains from the widest river. Um, you know, they can't wait to be together. Yeah. They're on the phone all the time. You know, and of course Jesus talked about the first love. You know, mm. um, but you know a lot of people that that wears off. And and I'm, and obviously you know you can't quite live like that, you know, because, yeah. you know, sometimes, um, you know, there's a lot of wrong motives there, but it just the, the passion, the desire mm. uh, needs to be there for Christ, for the kingdom, for other people. And, uh, you know, and, and that, of course, um, you know, then you're, you're doing it, uh, obviously, not only with the right motives, but with, with, you know, the right heart. And so you're happy doing it yeah. because you want to do it. Exactly. It's not because you have to do it, you want to do it. Exactly. You know? That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And that's always the scripture that's always stood out to me in the book of Revelation when Jesus is talking to one of the churches. I'm not sure which one. And he says, you've left your first love. Right. Let us see it. Let us see it, yeah. And it's, it's, it's a travesty, you know, mm. to think that, I mean, there must be so many Christians who are just living the ropes of Christian life mm. without even realizing that they've left their first love. Sure. Yeah. And of course, you know, I often think about that parable where, you know, the people that they, that started at the beginning of the day worked in the field all day. Yeah, they got true. the they got the denarius, you know, mm. they got what uh, they were promised. And then people came in late in the day. Mm. And of course, you know, when you become a Christian, and of course, I became a Christian decades ago, but I was just, you know, so like like fanatical, just like so, you know, mm. and you know, you kind of think, as I said, a lot of it was. Um, some of it was naivety. You kind of go where angels fear to tread yeah. and all that, and you got to have the wisdom to walk yeah, that true. out. Yeah. Um, but that that first love, you know that that you know you can see how God delights in that. It's like mm. a little child, like child you know, yeah, exactly. and uh, that's all part of it. And as I said, it's like you know teenagers falling in love, and and uh, you know you ever look at a boy, you know he doesn't shower and he won't, you know he won't shave, and then all of a sudden he finds a girlfriend. Next thing he's you know putting on the aftershave <laughs> and showering and all that kind of stuff, and you know. And so all those, you know, that love can change your heart and, mm. and uh, cause you to do, you know, the right thing. Mm. Yeah. Oh, very good. Well, that concludes our session with Pastor Peter about the second mile. If you haven't seen the message, make sure you check it out on YouTube and on the mm. app, the second mile. Thanks, Pastor Peter. Thank you, Kane. And I just want to say, make sure everybody goes the extra mile yes. of life because you will reap the benefits of it. It's so, so much more. You get live a life pressed down, shaken together and running over. So don't live a little life because you only get one shot. Exactly. Right? Never to live a mundane life. Yep. Great.